By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to use Replay Mod in Minecraft. From the basic controls all the way to the best render settings, you'll be a pro in no time. So strap in, drop a like and enjoy the video. What exactly qualifies me to teach you how to learn Replay Mod? Well, over a year ago now, I made a Replay Mod guide that was extremely successful. And now having way more experience from when I did back then, I've picked up a lot of tricks along the way that hardly anyone talks about. So if you chose this video, good job, you made the right choice. Today, we'll be starting right from the beginning. So let me show you how to download Replay Mod for Minecraft. If you already have Replay Mod installed, don't worry, you can skip ahead to the timestamp on screen, but I am leaving a huge game changer in this part where I show you how to make Replay Mod run smoother and render much quicker. So if you want to head down to the first link of the description, give it a click and you'll find yourself on the official Replay Mod website. At the time of making this, the current newest version of Minecraft is 1.20.4, so look for that and hit the big green button. Now head down and click the second link in the description to download Fabric, which is a mod loader that essentially makes it possible for all Minecraft players to download, install and run Fabric mods. Give it a click and you'll find yourself on the official Fabric website. Now don't click download for Windows and instead click download universal jar. And finally head to the third link in the description and you'll find yourself on the CurseForge website. And that's because we're going to be downloading Fabric API. Fabric API is actually required for most Fabric type mods, and a lot of them simply don't work without this, so it's pretty essential. Head to File and ensure it's 1.20.4, as it's extremely important all these downloads are the exact same update. Click the three dots and hit Download. Simply wait five seconds and your download will begin. But while we're waiting, consider hitting that like button and dropping a nice comment so this tutorial can help even more people. Okay, so once everything's downloaded here, open up your files and find your downloads folder. Drag and drop the Fabric Launcher, the Fabric API and Replay Mod all to your desktop. Let's start off by clicking the Fabric Launcher. Click Open With and select Java. You should now see the Mod System Installer, which looks like this. So here, once again, we need to make sure everything is compatible. So for the purpose of this video, I'm selecting 1.20.4, ensure create profile is ticked and hit install. We're now finished with that so we can delete that from our desktop. Next, we want to install our mods. So open the Minecraft launcher and you should now see fabric in the bottom left as an option when launching Minecraft. If you see this, that's great. If you don't, click installations, ensure modded is ticked, click new installations, hit the version drop down menu and find fabric in this list. I'm now going to show you a nice tip that most other tutorials don't tell you about. Click the three dots and click edit. Once you're there, go down and click more options and look for the long line of text. You may now see 2G, which is the amount of allocated RAM you'll be getting. And with replay mod, this isn't really enough. Instead, it's a good idea to change this number to half of your total RAM size. If you don't know what that is, search RAM and as you can see, it says installed RAM. Simply half this number and type it in before the G in the long line of text. As you can see, mine says 32, so I'm gonna put 16. Replay Mod will now work a lot smoother and even render out footage quicker. On the installations page, look for the folder icon next to fabric and give it a click. This is your official Minecraft folder and you should see a folder called mods. If you don't, that's fine. Just right click, create new folder and rename it to mods. But ensure it's spelled and looks exactly the same as how I've done it. Open up that folder and now drag our API along with replay mod into this folder. Close that folder down and hit play. You've now fully installed replay mod. Congratulations. Let's head over to the main premise of this tutorial. Before we get ahead of ourselves and record any footage, I just want to tweak a few settings. So when you're on the main menu, you want to head over to the replay viewer button right here. Go ahead and click that and you should see a blank page just like this because you haven't actually recorded anything yet. You want to head up to the top right where you can see the three lines. So this is the replay mod settings page. And there's only a few things we need to tweak and you don't even have to tweak these, but for me, it's my personal preference and I would tweak these if I was you. Head down to automatic recording and turn that off if you don't want it on. Show chart, you want that off as well. And you can leave show path preview on because I prefer it on. But for the recording indicator, just turn that off. 
All that does is it just shows a recording icon in the top left, which for me doesn't really matter too much. Okay, cool. Once all that's done, just click done. All I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up one of my worlds and load it. It doesn't matter which one, all we're going to be doing is just testing and learning how to use replay mod. Okay, so we've just loaded in and as you can see, it looks just exactly the same as normal Minecraft. But what I want you to do is hit escape and then go down to the bottom right and you can see start recording. Just click that and it will start recording and you'll be notified in the bottom left just like that. Now I'm simply just going to do a little bit of walking around. It doesn't really matter what you do, this is just the recording of the background so I've got something to play around with. If you had the indicator on you'd see an icon in the top left but we don't. We already know we're recording, we've literally just clicked it. So just go ahead, go and explore, go for a walk, probably leave it about 30 seconds to 1 minute 30. And this is just a tester so we can get a few different locations and a few different angles. Once you've finished recording what you wanted to record, all you have to do is hit escape. And we've got two options, you can either pause the recording and then continue it later on or what you can do is just stop the recording. And for me, I usually just stop recording and you're now free to exit out of the world. So just save and quit title and we should get a message in the top right saying saving replay files. So there we go, it's all saved now. All you have to do now is go back to your replay viewer. Just click that and then instantly we can see our saves. As you can see, it shows the date right here and also the duration of the actual video we just recorded. And if you really want, you can even rename this replay. But anyway, select the recording and then just load it. And once we load into the world, it's going to be automatically playing. So you just want to hit T on your keyboard and click pause in the top left. So we're now currently in the world. Basically, pressing T on your keyboard will bring up your mouse option. So instead of moving the camera around, it will keep the camera still and then you can move your mouse and use the UI on the screen. To get out of the UI interface, just simply click Escape on your keyboard. As you can see, I can now move around freely. I can move around wherever I want. I can fly. It's pretty much the same as spectator mode. So I think before I show you some of the controls, I'm just going to go over the UI interface and what it actually means. So obviously pressing pause and play in the top left hand corner pauses and plays the actual recording. So for example, if you want to skip forward, you can simply just skip forward to a certain part of the video. And then the bar below is actually your recording bar. So this will determine the actual duration of your render and then there's also keyframes which I'll go over a little bit later and then render camera path is just where you can save your file and render it out now as you may have seen we've got this speed slider at the top as you can imagine this literally just speeds up your video or slows it down so for example right now our characters moving in real time but if we want to slow him down we can just drag it to the left and we can move that to point 0.1 for example and you can see it's actually moving really really slow and I can also show you what it's like when you speed it up as you can see it gets faster and faster but that's pretty much just how that works okay cool so now we'll just go over the basic controls so to find this you just have to go down to the bottom left and click these three lines M is add event marker if there's an important section of the video that you actually want to mark but you don't want to render out quite yet just click M and it'll set a marker on this top bar. To get rid of this, just click it and then delete it. P obviously just pauses and plays the actual footage. I, I wouldn't really worry about that too much to be honest. Now L, J and K actually controls the camera's tilt. So for example, I can tilt the camera clockwise, I can reset it with K and then I can roll it counterclockwise with J, which is great because you can actually get some really cool cinematics by tilting the camera. Moving on, Z literally just toggles the light. Just a key note, so if you are using shader packs, this sometimes doesn't work depending on the pack, but it definitely always works in default Minecraft. N, you'll capture a thumbnail which will be saved to a specific thumbnail folder in the replay mod. So B is an interesting one that I use quite a lot to be honest. So say you're about 40 seconds into the video and our player's walked off somewhere, we've completely lost him. All you have to do is click B and then click on his name and you'll be teleported to your player. Once you've teleported to your player, you can just click a escape and then move out of the body and there you go. Also another quick thing for the player overview, you can actually toggle the visibility which is really good if you're doing like 
time lapses of large builds for example and you don't want to see your player placing blocks because then it just makes it look like the blocks are appearing out of thin air and it looks really nice you can load up quick mode which i don't do too often basically i'm pretty sure it just gets rid of like particles and gets rid of skin layers for example and it basically helps people with lower NPCs run replay mod a lot better. Other than that, I'd say that's all the controls you really need for the basics right now. Okay, let's get around to actually recording a path. So using the top bar, locate the point of the recording that you actually want to create a path. I really like this part here, so I'm going to record this part. I like to find a starting frame that you really like, and then you want to hit these two green buttons, which will add a position keyframe and a time keyframe. Okay, perfect. We've got our first keyframe so you can click escape and then come back a little bit and then you can see the actual location of your first camera path. I'm going to select like five or six seconds further on the top bar just to see where we end up and then I'm going to go for our second camera angle shot. This here seems good enough. All I'm going to do is add a position keyframe and add a time keyframe. And because we have the path enabled, we can literally see where the camera is going to move. So as you can see, we're starting over here and then we are moving over to this location, following our player to this point. And it's great as well because the green line actually shows where the camera is looking. And after every keyframe, it's good to see that you've actually got your camera movement and the speed is okay. On the bottom bar, just drag it to the start and then click play. And as you can see, we're moving, we're following the player, everything looks good. It's a nice shot. But there is one thing I want you to watch now. If you watch my player for the first second, you can see that it just completely glitches out, which has been a bug in replay mod for absolutely ages. So I'd suggest always trying to compensate and just giving yourself some leeway. So basically at the start of your recording, just give yourself a couple of seconds just to get your character set up and get him in frame. I'm not sure why it does this. It's really annoying and I hope they fix it soon, but that's just a little tip for you. Anyway, we like this path, it's a decent path, and we're gonna add more. So, we've followed the player from here, and now we want a pan of this area. So we're gonna go ahead about 10 seconds. We're gonna go up into the air, and we're gonna find a nice shot. Yep, sure, this will do. And then we'll just add two keyframes, and once you move out the way, you can obviously see the path once again. And it's really cool because once you've got more than two keyframes, you can create these smooth transition lines. So basically there's no sharp edges in your recording, it's all really smooth. So if you watch this again, we can see how we start here and already we're getting to a nice position like this and then we're gonna go for a nice pan of the whole area. What's really difficult with keyframes is as you can see, it's slightly slowed down. So it's really difficult to get your timings perfect. But you can just play around with it and you can figure it out. But either way, this is a nice shot here and a nice pan turnaround and I'm happy with that. But let's say for example, we didn't get the angle that we wanted and we want to change that. So you can actually select in between the two keyframes. You can see the path that we've got, but it's not quite what we want. So if you want to alter the path location, all you have to do is go to your new location and add two new keyframes. And there we go, that's a much nicer curve, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm just going to go back and check that everything looks good. Starting from the beginning here, nicely moving forward and from this position we're going up and getting a nice shot from above but as you notice there we kind of clipped through a few blocks there which doesn't look very good and this is because the curve pulled is a little bit too wide to change this we have to alter some of the keyframes and the easiest one to change is actually this keyframe here you want to get as close as you can on the top bar to the second keyframe as you can see, we're not quite there, so we're gonna move a little bit closer, and that seems to be good enough for me. Before we delete these keyframes, just get into a position close to where the camera was before. As you can see, this is where it is, and this is where it's looking. We want to move away from the structure, just like this. Yep, this will probably do. So delete both of these two keyframes, and input two new ones. And as you can see, the path has taken us away from the structure and everything's all good. So let's watch that back one more time. We're all the way over here, moving this way, crossing across this area here, ready to take a nice deep curve, but we're gonna miss the structure and we're gonna be looking down and panning from this aerial view. Now, before I move on to the most important part of this tutorial, which is actually saving and rendering out your camera path, 
please make sure you've dropped a like if you've learnt something new here today. So, a lot of tutorials also fail to talk about this next part, maybe because they don't actually know this even exists? I don't know. And also, before I show you, in my previous video, I got so many comments asking how to do this. Now, you may have realised throughout this whole video, I've been using shaders in my replays, which sounds easy enough to do, but it's a little more tedious. So, usually when we use shaders, for the majority of us, we'll use Optifine, but at the moment, we're using Fabric as our mod loader, and we can't have two mod loaders running at the same time. It's almost as if we need a mod loader that conjoins both both Optifine and Fabric. Introducing Optifabric. Optifabric is the key here, and if you head down to the description, you can download Optifabric. You'll need to place the Optifabric mod jar file, as well as the latest Optifine jar file from the official Optifine website, into your mods folder and all should be good. So hopefully that helps you understand most of the basic controls. We've come to the conclusion that this is the path that we want and we're fine with how it is. All you need to do is go to the top left and click the save icon and then there's some important steps here so make sure you don't miss out. You can leave the rendering method alone but I would recommend changing the encoding preset to custom bitrate and then you can change the bitrate to probably around 20. 60 FPS is good, and then this is the location that your file will be saved. And this is the name if you really want to change the name. You can also change if you want to render name tags or not. So in this situation, I don't want my name tag in there. You could probably get away with just leaving everything else as it is, but there is one very important setting that you need, and that is this command right here. Because when you go to render a video, it says rendering failed and you need to have FFmpeg installed. So just simply copy to clipboard or open in browser. So you'll find yourself on this site, just click this green download button here and then just download source code and it'll download it pretty quickly in the bottom left just like that. So once it's downloaded just click show in folder just like this and then you want to right click it once again and then extract files and then you want to put it in your C drive and then you want to look for program files 86 and then just click that just like that. Once you're done, just click OK and then it's going to extract all them files into that folder. So whilst that's extracting, all you have to do is go to documents, open up your C drive and then go to your program files 86 and it will have created a FFmpeg folder right here. So once you're in that file, you want to look for a folder called bin. For some reason, I didn't have this folder called bin. Not sure why, but what worked for me is going to the Windows and then going to GitHub and then you want to click this link right here and then you want to go for the essentialbuilds.zip which for me is the second link down. Just click that and it'll start downloading. And for some reason, this folder actually contains the bin file whereas the first one doesn't. I'm not sure why. But anyway, just do the exact same thing. Just extract that file to your program files 86 It'll do its thing once again and as you can see the new one's got loads of numbers and digits after it uh, This is the one you want to keep so you want to go into this one the first one you downloaded and just delete it Just click delete and then continue and that's going to fully delete there And then you just want to rename this to just ffmpeg just like that perfect double click it and there we go There's our bin file. I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but here we go So anyway, what you want to do is you want to click on the top one ffmpeg.exe and you want to right click it and then go to properties And once you're in properties you want to uh, copy and paste the location file just like this and then just paste it into the command location Just like this and then after you've done this you just want to put a back backspaced and then ffmpeg.exe and once you've done that that's it finally fully ready to render so if you click render you have a show preview or don't show preview if you show preview it basically slows down the render and then if you put it on the black screen it actually speeds up the render time so i'd recommend just turning that off let it render and then we'll be back and then see if it's actually done okay so as you can see actually watching this back it seems like everything is fine it looks like a good replay mod render if you do have any questions about this video just drop them in the comment section down below either myself or another a commenter will reply to it and try and help you out. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and maybe leave me a nice comment. And while you're at it, why not watch this video?